Are you looking to create your first podcast like I have, but don't know where to start? Then I would like to introduce you to an amazing tool called Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's a completely free service that offers creation tools to let you record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, then distributes your podcast so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. What's more, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Page 9, October 9th, 2020. Hello everyone and welcome to the Book Nerd Diaries, the bite-sized bi-weekly audio journeys of a bookworm through an endless to-read list. My name is Amber, and yes, I am the bookworm in question. Before I get into today's wonderful book, however, I just wanted to say thank you beyond words to Julie and Katie, aka one of the best sisters a girl could ask for, our two absolutely amazing current subscribers on Patreon. Also, thank you so much to everyone out there who has taken the time to give us a 5-star rating or a review on Apple Podcasts which is the best way to help new listeners find us and get our show on the charts. Unfortunately, not every review or rating shows up when I check my app, so I may not always see them to read on the show, but each one is so deeply appreciated. Lastly, my eternal gratitude goes out to everyone who follows us on social media, shares our show with the book and podcast lovers in their life, or simply takes the time to listen. We currently pass 300 plays so far of our little show across every platform, and every time that number goes up makes all of the time and effort I put into bringing you each new episode worth it. Thank you. Now, without further ado, let's get our book nerd on, shall we? Of all the holidays of the year, none will ever be as close to my heart as Halloween. From setting up a bunch of plastic skeletons and other equally kitschy decorations around the house, to standing outside in a cold and windy field to pick out the perfect pumpkin for my jack-o'-lanterns, to dressing up in a costume and going trick-or-treating with my family, buckets or bags laden with candy to trade with each other later. Everything about this time of year has a certain magical sense of nostalgia to it that nothing else can really touch in my eyes. My love for Halloween and the unique aesthetic mixture of terror and beauty that comes along with it has naturally worked its way into my taste in media of every kind. And so when I found Half World by Hiromi Goto, the book that I will be talking about today, my inner Wednesday Adams all but squealed with delight. Half World follows the story of a young, lonely, book-loving girl named Melanie Tamaki, who is sent on a desperate mission to rescue her mother, who has been kidnapped by a garish undead entity named Mr. Gluskin and taken to his realm of Half World, the world that lies between the lands of the living and the dead. The book ultimately came to my attention, once again, as a result of falling down a proverbial rabbit hole on my ebook app of choice, Overdrive. In in looking to see what titles were available that would be a good fit for me to cover for the Halloween season, this book looked like the perfect mix of macabre and fun, and I certainly wasn't going to pass that up, now was I? As I do not wish to give away any major spoilers of this book's plot for anyone who may wish to read it in the future, I would like to now list a few of my favorite aspects of the story in a segment I like to call The Highlight Reel. In no particular order, my highlights for this book are number 1. The Lore In the prologue for this book, it's established that human souls travel between three core planes of existence in their lifetime. The realm of flesh, or the land of the living, Half-world, a purgatory where souls await judgment after their bodies have died, and the world of spirit, where souls of the dead who have found peace finally pass on to their eternal rest. Long before our story begins, the delicate balance that had formerly existed between these three planes had long been disrupted by unknown forces, leading to a dangerous blur in the boundaries between life and death, trapping many souls in half-world to relive the moment of their death over and over again with no promise of peace in sight. This leads me to my second highlight, number two, Half World, the dangerous yet arrestingly colorful realm in which the, most of the book's major events occur. Its haphazard architecture spans every single era of history, 
grand castles right next to skyscrapers. But what really makes this world come to life, well, not really, but you get the point, are the fascinatingly grotesque trapped souls that call this place home. Some of these people are half-human, half-animal hybrids, and others are pale and zombie-like, still bearing the scars and marks of their death. But each is a very unique character with fascinating stories all their own, though we never get to find them out. None of these beings, however, loom quite as large as the antagonist of our story, the disturbingly cruel and monstrous Mr. Glueskin, who is named so for his rubbery, chalk-like skin and his ability to stretch out his sticky tongue to impossible lengths to capture and swallow whole anyone who opposes him. While chiefly populated by the undead, the realm of Half-World is a place absolutely buzzing with the life all its own, a heady mixture of the horrible and the whimsical that is absolutely fascinating to read about. Highlight number three, Melanie Tamaki, our young, bookish protagonist. At the very beginning of the story, she is found desperately running away from school bullies, indicating the immense amount of pain she's had to endure in her currently short life. What's worse, she returns home not long after to find her mother missing, and she discovers that she is the subject of a grand prophecy in which she is destined to help restore balance and peace between the three broken realms. All of this would be a heavy burden for even the strongest people to bear, but throughout her harrowing journey through Half-World, she never loses sight of her goals to rescue her mother, or her deep compassion for the people around her, even her enemies. Instead of using brute strength or violence to win the day, she taps into that compassion and choosing to meet her worst enemies with love. That kind of inner strength makes her the very best kind of hero in my book, and the kind of person I could only aspire to be one day. I would certainly highly, highly recommend this book to anyone like me who enjoys work that combines the dark and macabre with the whimsical, such as Neil Gaiman's incredible catalog of novels like Coraline or The Graveyard Book, or such classic Tim Burton films as Corpse Bride, The Nightmare Before Christmas, or Beetlejuice. This book is also absolutely perfect for anybody who enjoys the beloved Studio Ghibli family of animated films, like Spirited Away or Howl's Moving Castle. As the setting of Half-World feels like it easily could have come straight out of Miyazaki's imagination. By the way, if on some slim chance anyone from Studio Ghibli or any other animation studios might be listening to this show, this book was made to be adapted for a film. Just saying. Nevertheless, it's a perfectly spooky, super fun adventure that is an ideal read for the Halloween season or any time. That concludes our main book discussion for today. But don't worry, dear listeners, there's still more Book Nerd Diaries after this very quick break. I've risen once again from the dead, everyone. What can I say? You can't keep a good podcaster down, can you? Now, let's get back to our show. We have now reached that ultra-nerdy part of our little podcast, The Trivia Corner, where I give you a trivia question related to today's book. Well, sort of. As this episode is coming out shortly before Halloween, here is a special trivia question for you regarding that special celebration of all things scary. Ready? Your question is, what was the most popular Halloween candy in America in the last decade? Was it A, Nerds, B, M&Ms, or C, Skittles? Your answer is C, Skittles. According to data compiled by CandyStore.com in 2019, the colorful fruit-flavored candy beats out Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and M&M's as the highest-selling sweet of the 2010s, averaging 3.3 million pounds sold each year in the past decade alone. Taste the rainbow indeed. The source for that answer was TheDailyMeal.com. Link will be in the show notes. We have, unfortunately, nearly reached the end of our episode for today, but before I go, I would like to leave you with this episode's listener poll. Your question is, what is your favorite Halloween candy? I'll be posting the poll up on Twitter and Facebook pages, which are linked in our show notes if you don't already follow us, so please head on over and cast your vote. I'll be reading out the results in our next episode. 
With that, I hope you all have a wonderful Halloween, dear fellow book nerds, and I'll see you again soon for another entry in the Book Nerd Diaries. The Book Nerd Diaries and its associated shows are written, edited, researched, and hosted by me, Amber Wilchin. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for the use of our theme song, The Show Must Be Go, and Sincerely Media on Unsplash via Anchor for our wonderful cover art. If you would like to connect with us online, you can follow us on Instagram or Twitter at BNDPod, Facebook at Book Nerd Diaries, or via our website at wordpress.com slash BNDPod. We also have a Ko-fi page at ko-fi.com slash BNDPod, where for a small donation you can pass along a special shout out for someone you love or some good news you'd like to share with the world, and I'll read it out for you during the next episode. If you would like to send any comments, questions, or ideas for future episodes my way, please feel free to drop us an email anytime at bndpod at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, everyone, please take care of yourselves and each other, and don't forget to keep on reading.